some of these critics, these pundits. I absolutely adore them, lads. I have unbelievable time from, but they're, they're a great bunch, but it's not acceptable. I'd like to play the hard man when, when they're on it. It's not very pleasant when you're trying to manage a team. All you're looking for is a bit of civility and a bit of decency, but they just dismiss you like, like you, you know, you have nothing to do with the bloody occasion. Yes, we have an All-Ireland Hurling final special. Will O'Callaghan, how's it going? Morning, folks. How are you getting on? Good now. And Owen, we're going to bring up the, the picks just now. I think you've had a, a last-minute change. Owen, oh, not from not from this graphic, but take it... Oh, <laughs> dramatic. Tell us, Owen, what happened? Uh, I've just been swept away on a Kilkenny wave here. I've just been uh, the, the sort of the era... Yara Yara is obviously something that speaks to me and uh, I understand where they're coming from. I understand the sages when they kind of pull up their hood and they say, sure, we don't have a chance on someday. I understand what that means. I speak their language and I know that, that means that they have a hell of a chance this Sunday and they persuaded me with, with that logic. They've, they've kind of blown me away here with that and, and I think Kilkenny are going to dethrone Limerick. I've just had a, just a I've just woken up this morning and, and had that realisation. Also, my picks over the last couple of weeks have been absolutely appalling. I'm on an absolutely astonishingly bad run so I need to mix things up in some in some way. Well, last week was absolutely shocking for me. I went all out thinking that Derry were going to do the business and yeah, we we seen what happened. But Owen, so you've been in Limerick, you've been in Kilkenny, so you're feeling something a little bit different in Kilkenny then. Well, I, I, I also think that there's a feeling in Limerick of nerves towards Kilkenny. Now, of course, that's just from the people you're meeting on the street. It's not from the team themselves. But I think a few people are still a little bit shook about what happened in 2019. Now, the reality may be that come Sunday, 2019 will be either A, a non-factor, or B, something that Limerick uses huge motivation in order to try and get revenge against Kilkenny. But there's definitely this sense that if some team is going to beat this Limerick team, it's going to be Brian Cody. And like I, I, I just wonder, like, do we sometimes underappreciate just how much Cody kind of, how petty Cody is? And I mean that in a, in a positive way, and, and how much he will be looking at the fact that Limerick are going for three in a row. Three in a row is a bloody hard thing to do. Like, uh, two is, is tough, but three is really really difficult and Cody knows that more than anybody else that maybe they don't get enough credit for actually doing their three in a row and you know he would have experienced it twice in the, the last decade as well where they got to and couldn't get to three and just that 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 sense of Limerick stomping over the Kilkenny team of the 2000s or at least being compared to them I just I just think that Cody thinks about that sort of stuff and, and is pretty wound up and this year really went after this Limerick team and I'd say he's been dying to get another crack off him since 2019 as well. So, I don't know, I think, I think there's enough to hang your hat on to make a reasonable case that Kilkenny can do it this weekend. And I think that after the Clare performance, I think you'd be, uh, I think you'd be, it's, it, it would be strange to suggest that, that Limerick are the dom, are, are, are dominant team and are, and are going to blow Kilkenny out of the water, especially if you bring into proceedings the, the fact that Keane Lynch could be missing. Yeah, 100%. Um, I, I, I'm not confident with Limerick, I have to say. I went back and forth and when Colm rang me yesterday, I said, oh, I'm not sure if I'm going to go with Limerick. And then just in the in the last second, I did. But uh, yeah, it, it was a tough call to make. But I would not be surprised, as you said, um, Brian Cody coming up against Limerick three in a row, as you said, is a tough thing to do. So I would not be surprised if Kilkenny get over the line. But I'm sticking by Limerick for the moment anyway Will tell us why you've gone with Limerick yeah well look three in a row has never been completed by a Limerick team until now they're kind of chasing their great team of the 1930s currently where potentially they could do four in five years which is even more impressive than doing three in a row Kilkenny uh, last team to do three in a row back in 2008 on the run where they almost went five in a row were beaten by Tipperary eventually in that uh, classic final but look I think you'd have to have some concerns from a Limerick perspective just due to the fact that they're without a two-time hurler of the year most likely this weekend in Keane Lynch. Everyone is trying to work out exactly when he picked up the knock and how long he could potentially be out for because there was a lot of talk and rumours about 10 days and that may have happened at training on Tuesday. So then it's very unlikely he's going to be back in time for the final. I think Nash has had a knock this week but is expected to play. Not ideal though. One of your best players in defence could potentially have a niggle going into the game. And I think Aaron Galan was recovering over the last week or so as well. It's the quick turnaround of the two weeks that probably doesn't help. Limerick would have probably preferred if it was the old system where they had a little bit of extra time to even get more time into Peter Casey's legs where Keen Lynch would have had adequate recovery time after this knock to come back for the final. But like Limerick have had to do all year, they just have to kind of go with the flow and deal with the issues that they've had. I think 
the one advantage if you're Limerick about the Keane Lynch situation is that it's not been a case of Keane Lynch has been pulling the strings for them all season and has been in remarkable form and absolutely key to the way that they play and now he's picked up an injury on the eve of the All-Ireland Final. The reality is that since the second round of Munster, they've been without Keane Lynch with the exception of a few minutes off the bench in the semi-final when he didn't look 100% back to full fitness anyway. So they've been able to get game time all year into Colin O'Neill and he's been playing remarkably well. And you've got a team who are just so good at being able to adapt positionally and personnel-wise around games too. And tactically, Limerick are able to switch it up a bit and still players come in and the machine just keeps on rolling. So if any team was to lose a two-time hurler of the year, Limerick are probably best placed to be without Keane Lynch this weekend because we already had question marks if Keane Lynch was coming back into the team about where Kyle Hayes was potentially going to play. Was Graham Mulcahy going to have to drop out of the team? If it means that they just have to go with the 15 that they did in the All-Ireland semi-final victory against Galway and rely on the fact that maybe Maybe Casey can come off the bench and that David Reedy can have another meaningful contribution. I think John Kiley would have taken that start of the season as, you know, it's not exactly optimum to be without Keane Lynch, clearly. But Limerick have possibly been blessed by the fact that they've been able to try other players out in positions and to get game time into O'Neill during the season. So I think from that point of view, Limerick won't be overly concerned. And that's one of the reasons that I'm tipping Limerick to win. I think they will find solutions to the problems that are placed before them when it comes to throwing at half past three on Sunday. And we're all talking about this Kilkenny ambush. And I take the point that you know, they hurled with remarkable intensity in the semi-final against Clare. You have to offset that against how poorly Clare played, though. And also the way that Kilkenny came out firing with a blitzkrieg of an attack in the 2019 semi-final. I'm not sure really how much relevance 2019 holds, though, because of how much the teams have evolved since. I think Limerick are a far better team than they were in 2019. I think there's no way that Limerick get caught in the way that they did by Kilkenny. They know exactly what's coming for them this Sunday. So I think that element of surprise might well be gone. But this Kilkenny team are obviously very good at spoiling it for opposition. And that's going to be the strength that they look at. It would be remarkable if they were to win this 12th of the Cody era, having already lost two championship games this year. But Kilkenny appeared to be at a better place now than they were at any other stage of the championship this season. Hmm. Yeah, I think that's the, the thing with Kilkenny. They seem to be getting better game on game. They're constantly improving. Owen, is it the Clare game that really swung it for you that you've seen Kilkenny in action or... Is it that you're in Kilkenny and, and they're all swaying you? Yeah, no, there's somebody with a, a gun pointing at my head right now at the other side of this phone. Uh, the, like, w- w- Will does make a, a good point there at the end of the day. just seem to have timed this run to the final perfectly. So, yeah, of course, the, the Clare semi-final is the, the key point and all of that. Like, it'd be interesting, like, I mean, if Clare had actually more accuracy that day, Kilkenny could have conceded quite an amount. And, I mean, the, the situation with, with Limerick then is that you add their firepower onto proceedings and the, you could say that Kilkenny's defence has... Uh, Teak tough as it looked at times last time out that there is actually kind of a few holes or a few opportunities for teams to to get on top of them but I don't know I just think that these individual performances that we've seen from Kilkenny are kind of going in one direction you've also got the hallmarks of a team that have done it in the past and it may just be you know the, the image of Richie Hogan who'll probably come off the bench at some point uh, maybe will come off the bench at some point which is the sort of thing that you're you're hanging your hat on with regards to this being the old Kilkenny and Will is right there like 2019 is a long time ago but you could maybe ask why did the 2019 performance happen and maybe it's down to the intensity of a Brian Cody team it's Kilkenny and Croke Park and this year they look very good in Croke Park those couple of things will still be the case this weekend and a team just unbelievably high on confidence after what they did to Clare so I'm not I'm by no stretch making the uh, ex- extension here that because Clare drew with Limerick and Kilkenny hockey's Clare that Kilkenny will beat Limerick. That's not my logic whatsoever. It's, it's different to that. It's, it's just about the... I'm always just getting swept away in the mystique around Kilkenny, and I just have, I have a hunch that they're, that they're going to do the job this weekend. Yeah, and I feel that Clare didn't turn up whatsoever against Kilkenny. It was almost a, a, a different team altogether. I heard Tony Kelly speaking about it during the week as well. So I definitely don't think we could go off that. But you just can't ever write Kilkenny off. And we spoke with Brian Cody there, 24 years now, Will. Would this be the biggest achievement of his if he could go the whole way? Yeah, I really felt if they'd won in 2019, it would have been his best All-Ireland coming back after four years of not winning and transitioning a new team after some of the best players of all time had finished up after the 2015 victory. Now, even going an extra three years onto that, it would be even more impressive when you consider he's bought three or four players uh, into the team this year and the way that they've evolved. Like, I even think back to the league where Blanchfield was one of the best players that Kilkenny had in the league, and yet he hasn't seen game time in championship. We talk about Richie Hogan, who's got no game time this year whatsoever. 
whatsoever. Um, I wonder how much involvement Richie Hogan is going to have this weekend. We'll obviously get the match say 26 because Kilkenny tend to name their 15 and the subs at around 9 o'clock on a Friday ahead of a big game. If Richie Hogan is involved this time, does he get sprung from the bench? Because they kept him in reserve for the semi-final victory against Clare. To do it, you know, with an ageing TJ Reid who's going, he's going to be 35 later this year, um, albeit he hurled remarkably well against Clare. Again, maybe he's timing his performances because uh, TJ wasn't having the best of championships. Remember, he got the hook back in Salt Hill when they were playing against Galway. Didn't play well that day. Had a few understated performances since. And then, you know, very much came to the fore and scored 10 points the last day. And everything that TJ hit seemed to go over. His frees were almost perfect uh, in the semi-final against Clare. Adrian Mullen put in his best performance of the year. Owen Cody looked back to good form. Mikey Butler did a remarkable job. And Tony Kelly, can Mikey Butler do exactly the same on Aaron Galan this coming Sunday if he does that gives Kilkenny a serious chance because you talk about the motivation of 2019 one of the things that motivated the players back in 2019 Paul Murphy has told us this on the hurling pod this week was that Limerick were talking a lot of smack going into that semi-final in 2019 and it was something that Kilkenny had actually talked about afterwards and even uh, the aforementioned TJ Reid had been particularly inspired by I think it was in by Seamus Flanagan who was talking about the fact that Limerick were talking about outworking every single team in the country and then that was huge motivation for a Kilkenny a Kilkenny team who you know had such an inspirational record in the previous 10 years before that it was like right these new boys are trying to come and take our crown and they went out and hurled just remarkable hunger and intensity that day in 2019 it will take a similar type of performance but Kilkenny cannot afford like Clare who were under strength and underperformed the last day still had 26 scoring chances which they left behind them. Given how good Limerick are at shooting from distance and at you know, chance creation during games, they cannot afford to be that loose defensively, even if Mikey Butler does a really good job on Aaron Galan. If they cough up that many chances for Limerick, Limerick will definitely win this final. So Kilkenny have got tightening up to do on their semi-final as well. Although, I have to say, and I've said a few times on quick picks on OTBM this year, I wasn't so sure about the way that Kilkenny were distributing the ball um, from an attacking point of view earlier in the season. They seem to have got that right now. There is more of a mix. They're willing to run the ball through the lines. They got better ball into their forward line in both the Leinster final and in the All-Ireland semi-final. So that's trending in the right direction if you're Kilkenny. Albeit, you have to come up against the Limerick defence who've got six All-Stars across their six starting backs and their goalkeeper, Nicky Quaid, as well. So it's going to be a very difficult nut for them to crack at the weekend. Albeit, they have probably the hurler of his generation in TJ Reid to help them do so. Yes, that is for sure. And I think the underdogs tag as well is an aspect that Kilkenny will just relish, as I said earlier in the show. So I'd be I'd be scared to see them um, at the weekend now coming in with that underdog tag. But we're going to have a look at the leaderboard before we go. Hmm. Oh, oh, 1%. <laughs> that was because of last weekend. I had a shocking weekend um, last week. I called it all wrong and Tommy got, I think, every single one right, didn't he? He was the only one to go to Gal- for Galway, I think, yeah. The rest of us were pretty much dairy across the board, as I recall. OK. Wow. And how many games do we have left? Is it just the, the last two games? Oh, God. Need to catch them. This em. is the football final, yeah. This is where we should have introduced the points difference at this stage. I think if, uh, if Adrian Barry was around and not on his holliers at the moment, he would definitely be making a case that we should have had a margin for victory and points based on that to try and uh, keep this close going into the last weekend. Because we've all gone, obviously, for... Well, except for Owen, I've gone for Limerick this weekend. So in all likelihood, this is pretty much done and dusted. Uh, it's all going to come down on the football final, isn't it? It is, yes. So we'll have to see where we're all going to go. You never know, Owen, you could jump right up now that you're, you've been the only one to go for Kilkenny. As long as Kilkenny and Galway win these next two weeks, I'll be happy. 